Before we begin today's video, I'd like to give a huge shout out to FanDuel, the best way to play fantasy sports daily, bar none. Make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up, and this is something I use quite often. Love to make money, and I love football, so it's a fantastic combination. I also do MLB and NBA season when that comes around. I've been using FanDuel for a while, so I'm very excited to partner up with them. Make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. I'm working on getting an actual referral link, but until then, code BANGLE at sign up. I will have a link in the description if you guys want to potentially win millions of dollars by just playing daily fantasy sports. This is the absolute best way to do it. Again, use code BANGLE at sign up. Click that link in the description. What's going on, guys? BANGLE again here coming back at you with another video. The start of season number three coming off a Super Bowl victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, in the past season. We have some upgrade points from the preseason. We're currently sitting in preseason week four. We have the Raiders to play. We're one and two in the preseason via simulation. It's I'm not worried about it. We have Damon Harrison, Janoris Jenkins, and Olivier Vernon sitting on the trade block, potentially. We'll see what happens with that. I'm not considering really uh, trading anyone but Janoris Jenkins. I will say... That the team has improved over this offseason. If you guys missed it, we drafted Pone Gardner, who is now going to start at right guard for us. We traded for one of the best tackles in the league currently in overall wise season three, Ryan Ramchek from the New Orleans Saints. 91 overall star development fits the scheme. I like to see that. DeMar Jacobs has been moved to tight end. So clearly, DeMar Jacobs is no longer going to wear number 18. He is going to wear number 80. So, DeMar Jacobs, there you go. Let's do 84. I think I think 84 is better. We're going to give him 84. Shout out to Larry Donnell, ex-giant, probably Hall of Fame uh, tight end. We have a new backup running back in Carlos Kershaw, another Penn State. We like our running backs out of Penn State. I don't know what to tell you. He's all right. Not incredible, but he's all right. We'll see if we can get him some touches over the course of the season. He'll wear 23 for now. We'll see how that goes. On the defensive side of the ball, there have been a lot of changes. Ellis Offord has been traded. Pretty big news. B.J. Goodson is now playing left outside linebacker. We drafted Alex Espinoza in the first round, traded up to get him. He is a superstar middle linebacker out of Wisconsin, and he is an absolute beast wearing number 52 for us. Really like what we see from him. We went and drafted another first-round defensive tackle in Lawrence Thomas out of Nebraska. We love our Big Ten players. I like That's pretty much it. Morris Dubose went to uh, Nebraska, probably. We drafted him out of Nebraska. Drafted Espinoza out of uh, Wisconsin. There are, there are more. I can tell you that. Is it over you? Yeah, him out of Wisconsin. Who, el who else have we drafted? Uh, there are more. There's got, there's got to be. There's got to be. Ellis Offord, who's not on the team anymore, was uh, Wisconsin or Nebraska. I think I can't recall. So Lawrence Thomas, look to see him getting involved a little bit over the course of the season. We'll see what we can do. We signed Jalen Mills in the offseason in free agency. He's going to play cornerback for us with Janoris Jenkins regressing just heavily. That's the only thing you can say. He regressed heavily. As you can see, he's just worse in speed, worse in coverage, worse in everything that matters for a cornerback. That's Janoris Jenkins. Lorenzo Carter is going to stay starting at right outside linebacker. We drafted Julius Manning out of Texas. Hook'em Horns to be our new starting free safety. Basically, we want him to be Landon Collins V2 because uh, we've had a lot of success with Landon Collins. So we got another guy, you know, big box player. We got to boost his own coverage over time. He's got good speed, great head power, tremendous in the box safety. 78 block shed, 87 tackle, 87 pursuit. Very, very good in the box safety. We'll look to uh, have his coverage go up over time. Tyrus Charlton is another player that we drafted. He was a later round pick that actually turned out to be pretty good. He's a 75 overall. And he'll play a lot of special teams. 45 is also a gross number. So we're going to give him a number in the 20s or the 30s here. It looks like the 30s is the only thing available. And uh, we're going to give him... We're going to give him 36. Not the best, not one of my favorite numbers, but I, it's all right. It does what it needs to do. But other than that, let's go ahead 
and advance the week to the start of season number three. It's officially underway. We're still going to have those players on the trade block. Uh, and we have players that will need to re-sign over the course of this season. That is going to be Ryan Ramchek, Damon Harrison, Olivier Vernon, Evan Ingram, Dalvin Tomlinson, Janoris Jenkins, Wayne Gallman, etc. So, Olivier Vernon, Damon Harrison, Janoris Jenkins, three players we were considering trading, or still are, I guess, will be free agents at the end of the season. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. 31-year-old Janoris Jenkins... 31-year-old Damon Harrison. I think their their odds of making the team in Season 4 are not incredibly high. That's where I'm sitting right now. Damon Harrison is the highest, and then Olivier Vernon probably. Damon Harrison's in a tough spot because we drafted a defensive tackle in the first round. Olivier Vernon, he's 29. He will never be higher than a 90 overall, probably. And Janoris Jenkins will be probably an 80 at the end of this season. I'm going to be honest with you right now. Janoris Jenkins probably will be traded at some point this season. I would say very, very high percentage on that. Maybe even this episode. But we're going to set our season goal here. And that is going to be... Uh, we're coming off a Super Bowl win. We're going to make the playoffs, I'd say. So let's go ahead and commit that goal with 11 wins. And we still have trade offers. If you guys weren't here for... The off-season stream on Twitch. My Twitch is linked down below as well as my second channel and my third channel if you guys just want to check those out. The offers for Damon Harrison are not incredible. We have some that include a second-round pick this year, but nothing that makes me say, let's trade him now. For Janoris Jenkins, the offers are even worse with just future picks. Uh, this one actually is a second this year. They're not actually too bad, but I might do something manual with him. And then for Olivier Vernon... I think we may have been offered a first-round pick in there somewhere. Yeah, the Steelers are offering me a future one, which is not bad for Olivier Vernon, but we'll have to see what happens over the course of the season. I'm not ready to just trade away some of my best players that make this team really work because starting left end, starting defensive tackle, the only one that you know is not like the others is Janoris Jenkins. We do have an upgrade point. We're going to go ahead and spend that in the upgrade player section along with some other players. Saquon Barkley will be the first one. And what will it be for Saquon? 93 speed. His juke and spin is fantastic. I think we're going to continue to focus on him as an elusive style back, though. Upgrade him to a 97 overall for Saquon Barkley. Plus one elusiveness, plus one break tackle, plus two ball carry vision, plus one awareness. And where is the C on his jersey, by the way? Where is the captain? Why is that not on there? We named him a captain sometime last year. Will Odell have his captain? logo on his chest he he does why did saquon not have his maybe he's just a graphical glitch in the upgrade section looks like it was so he's a two-year captain now let's go back and upgrade players we don't really have to worry about that ryan ramchek new new york giant we're gonna go right into pass protector why not that's where he excels we're gonna make him even better fits the scheme he goes up better pass blocker even stronger now 92 strength and his run blocking is not bad either. He was a really, really important get for us. We've got one of the best offensive lines in the NFL now. Evan Ingram will continue to work on him as a receiver because it, it gets blocking as well. As you guys can see, blocking goes up. But he overall looks better. Plus two to catching, I think, is huge. That puts him at 91. Sterling Shepard. We're going to transition him more to a slot receiver, like primarily. So he's going to play less and less on the outside and more and more in the slot. So we're going to focus primarily on slot. BJ Goodson, who is up to an 84 overall left outside linebacker. We're going to go to run stopper on him. That's his primary thing. So we're going to work on it more. Fits the scheme as well. So I like that. Janoris Jenkins, who, as I said, is on the way out. He's a zone style corner. It looks like more 88 zone. We're going to focus on that. Get his overall up to an 85. Maybe he'll have even more trade value. I think that's going to be pretty huge. Plus two zone coverage gets him to a 90. So I do like to see that because he will still be playing. For Lorenzo Carter, he's going to be probably my primary user, but I'd like to see him get better in zone coverage on his own. Tackling is 83. I'd like to see that go up. Block shedding is 84. I like that. I want tackle to go up, but I also think that as a cover guy, he needs to improve. So we're going to go pass coverage. Brings him up to an 81 overall. Show me tackling in there. We don't get tackling. We do get boost to coverage, though. And man coverage was a one that went up a lot. He goes up to 66. So that's pretty bad. And then the rookie, Alex Espinoza. 
Run stopper is our primary scheme. He's got decent coverage as well. Let's just get his tackle up. Let's go into run stopper. Fits the scheme. He goes up to an 81 overall. And that impacts uh, mainly awareness and play rec. Which for a rookie, those are going to be his lowest numbers. Play rec and awareness clearly in the low 70s there. So that's going to be what's boosted a lot when we, uh, when we actually do end up upgrading him over the course of the season. We're also going to be implementing auto subs for this season. Because I think it's important to see more players look for that more realistic feel. So I've got, shout out to Flasco, I believe is how you'd say his name. He's got um, special auto sub sliders that we're going to be inputting. And we'll see how that plays over the course of the season. We're also using new sliders, which I'll show off in a second. These are what the auto sub sliders are set to be. If you guys are interested in using them for your own league or whatever. This is what everything is. I'm basing it off of Flasco's Madden sliders with the auto subs. So that's what we're rocking with for auto subs. As for the sliders, we're trying out new sliders via his name is, uh, he's got a name for sure. I'll tell you that much. What is his name? Mike something maybe? Something 10? Matt 10. These are his sliders with a few adjustments. Maybe only one adjustment that was pass blocking. Because in the preseason, if you guys saw that, uh, we had our starting offensive line in and we were taking heavy Heavy pressure from third and fourth string uh, defensive linemen on the Miami Dolphins, who are a 74 overall. So I figured we're going to boost the pass blocking just a little bit, especially considering we have Trent Brown, Will Hernandez, Ryan Ramchek. It shouldn't be happening as much as it is. So I boosted that by 10 up to a 58 from a 48, I believe. But without further ado, um, I think we're ready to start the season. All right. Time to play the full game against the Philadelphia Eagles. They are a 90 overall to our 88. These new sliders are going to be interesting because if the usual all Madden cheese comes out, I'm going to be admittedly frustrated. And uh, it was certainly an interesting thing at the start of the series when, when that would happen quite a bit. We got a, a nice mixture of people that hate the series slash me versus... Uh, the people that really just love seeing me do very poorly. It's There's a nice happy medium because if I do very well, people complain. But if I do really poorly, people also love to complain. It's awesome. All right. Here we go. We got a uh, Sunday night expedition. Not an expedition. It's not an exhibition either. It's more of an expedition. Than an exhibition but uh either way it might not be a difficult game or it could be we'll see I, I don't know uh these sliders could be the death of me we do have some playmakers and yes the user's coming out and we're starting early with a sack olivier vernon takes down carson wentz blowing up the right side sack to start that's unbelievable that's the last thing I maybe would have expected as we have OV and uh, Roman Pugh now switching sides and that's gonna be a shot deep and it's picked off by Morris DuBose oh my goodness the sophomore out of Wisconsin nope out of Nebraska with the interception first of all I am shocked that the CPU would actually take a shot down the field Maybe these new sliders are awesome. We actually get a cornerback interception. And second of all, the fact that Morris DuBose made a play on the ball is amazing. As Odell drops that one over the middle. Are you kidding me, Odell? If these new sliders actually make the game super fun, yet challenging, that would be awesome. That's exactly what I want. Because uh, if more cornerbacks make, make plays on the ball versus actual linebackers getting all the interceptions, that would be probably ideal. I would like that. I need more defensive back plays in the ball. I need more, you know, the CPU taking chances. I hate this whole, you know, dink and dunk, run the ball, punt that we've seen over the past uh, season two. We're going to roll out with Laletta. We're going to throw that. It's Evan Ingram. First down. That looks like a blitz coming in. Somebody get open. Somebody get open. Go, Kyle. Vanilla Vic. Touchdown. Kyle Laletta. 
with a rushing touchdown. If you guys have watched this, this series for the past couple years, or seasons, if you will, who would have guessed that we would have started off the game, first defensive play with a sack, not me, followed up by a cornerback interception, not me, followed up by a Kyle Laletta rushing touchdown. It's just unbelievable things happening in season three. Just completely different than what we've seen in uh, in season two and even season one. Oh, you got to shed that block, Espinoza. Now we got Julius Manning that also can't wrap up. Espinoza comes back to make the tackle. 33 yards on Jay Ajayi's first carry of the game. And I have seen some things that I don't like, which is BJ Goodson starting over uh Lorenzo Carter I don't like that at all so we're gonna change the sub linebacker slot cornerback is gonna stay Drew Norris Jenkins it's interesting with the cornerbacks that we have as um let's see we're gonna switch that and switch that have Roman Pugh pretty much always off the right side it's interesting who's starting in certain spots I really I really find it confusing I should have changed this but I was uh stupid with what I was doing as we're gonna have Morris Dubose remain our primary return man on both kick and punt returns and then we have a new puncher we drafted Mr. Irrelevant Kendall Nofield Feld Newfeld I don't like the name I'm gonna be honest we might change it <laughs> no nah, I won't do that uh cornerback Jalen Mills is at two and then middle linebacker we have Antoine Todd who has changed the left outside linebacker that boosted his overall to a 79 uh, I just want to make sure that BJ Goodson isn't coming in on those style of plays because I feel like Lorenzo Carter is just more effective. All right, big third down and 13 for Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles throwing at Lorenzo Carter. Easy reads. Green eggs and ham. Lorenzo Carter with the user pick. And we're taking over. Seems like the Philly special isn't a uh, trick play pass to the quarterback at all. It's actually throwing interceptions. Saquon Barkley rumbles forward for a gain of five. Kyle Aletta rolls out. We're going to throw on the run. And Kyle Aletta makes the throw to Odell Beckham Jr. who breaks a tackle and is down at the 29. Let's get this offense going, man. First and 10. We're going to throw that ball. Howard Russell can't hold on. I was fitting it in through a tight window. We had Sidney Jones in coverage on the uh, on the right side there. A little upset that we can't have that play. I need I need that ball to be caught. At bottom line, need that to be caught. I'm looking to get Howard Russell more touches, and we're just going to throw it down to Evan Ingram here. Didn't really get much going. Maybe he had Demar Jacobs, but if Howard Russell is going to step in and be that number two receiver over a guy like Sterling Shepard, I'm going to need production. You have to catch the ball when it's thrown to you. I know Odell dropped a pass in this game as well. But no excuses for Saquon. Get there. Get there, Saquon. He breaks the tackles even. Let's go, Saquon. Second down and four. Could run the ball here, but we're going to see who's open. We're going to throw it up. Howard Russell, you... Oh, man. That's wide open, and it's in your hands. You have 94 spectacular catch. It bounces off his hands like seven times catch the ball it's third down and four now you've got to be kidding me come on Saquon get in there Saquon Barkley first down saving us I cannot trust any receiver it seems surprised the game didn't sub in a uh, someone that makes a lot more sense there which is the rookie Carlos Kershaw we're gonna give the ball back to Saquon as he's checking back in and he has the end zone Saquon Barkley with the touchdown, we're going to go up 14 0 over the Philadelphia Eagles here. And we've looked pretty good so far. Coming off a Super Bowl victory, I mean, I would hope so. Get there, BJ Goodson. You were so slow. Espinosa is going to wrap up, but that's pretty good sideline to sideline speed. I think he has 85 speed, which is uh, pretty solid overall. It was a lot better than what we had with Ellis Offord with like 78. And BJ Goodson sitting around 80. I will take 85, but it is third down and three. Somebody do something. Olivier Vernon with his second sack of the game. Carson Wentz rolls right into him. Philadelphia is going to punt. 
Man, I don't know what to tell you guys. I'm playing the sliders that are, uh, you know, on this website. Operation Sports, they're highly credited. And we are at 14-0 with the ball. So maybe I'm just amazing. I don't, I don't know. I might be the best to ever do it. Give me problems. Oh, Saquon. Saquon Barkley. If number 24 was not there to make that tackle, oh, Saquon could have been gone. I was I was indecisive there. Um, we had some open receivers. I just was, we're playing conservatively. Didn't want to turn over the ball. Figured we just play it safe. I like Demar Jacobs though over the top. The new tight end, Demar Jacobs. 10, five, touchdown. Demar Jacobs on what might be his first NFL touchdown, 89 yards to the house. And we're gonna take a 21 nothing lead. Let's go. Are you kidding me? Uh, wow, all right, that's how the Eagles get on the board. Special teams. Okay. I don't even know what to say right now. First and 10, we're passing. We're gonna throw that ball, and that is not the right decision. That's intercepted by New Philadelphia Eagle Rashawn Melvin. Waited too long in Evan Ingram. Waited too long on it. Man, my bad. Second and four, play action. What do we want here? I want that ball. It's DeMar Jacobs. He's unstoppable. Where would we have been last year if we had DeMar Jacobs starting um, in two tight end sets over Red Ellison? First and 10, we're gonna go with another play action here. And we're gonna try to thread the needle. Howard Russell would have been a really, really tough catch. Can't come down with it. Third and eight from the nine. Let's get a first down here. We're gonna roll out Laletta. Kyle Laletta again! Oh, he stood up at the one. Doesn't fumble, gets the first down. Oh, Kyle, I love it. Looks like Odell's basically getting double teamed. Might wanna throw the fade to him regardless. I don't really have it. I don't like the high point. We're gonna throw across our body. Evan Ingram. What a throw from Kyle Laletta off balance to find the wide open Evan Ingram in the back of the end zone. 28 to seven New York Giants over the Philadelphia Eagles here in week one at home. What an incredible first half for us, both offensively and defensively. DeMar Jacobs has shown up. Alex Espinoza has been incredible. Morris Dubose with a pick. We're firing, firing on all cylinders here. That was a mismatch. Can someone make the tackle? Alex Espinoza comes back to do it. Uh, was trying to hit sick. We were in man coverage with Alex Espinoza on Parker Kuhn, who was an incredible receiver last year for the Eagles. As that is complete somehow. Oh, bear down, defense. I'm all right with bending, but don't break. That is wide open. Where is Janoris Jenkins, dude? Ashawn Jeffrey just sat down. He was wide open. I mean, we are in hard flats there. They came out in a curl. Janoris Jenkins should have been standing right there, and Avery Moss is in the game. This is a disaster. That's another screen. Janoris Jenkins can't wrap up. Nobody can. Jay Ajayi into the end zone for the touchdown, and the Philadelphia Eagles have this back within 14 points for maybe the third time today. We have 43 seconds and three timeouts to score. It's certainly not impossible. It's going to be difficult. The Eagles just dominated our defense on that drive. Nobody did anything right. We've got big playmakers in this spot for a reason. Let's make a play. Stepping up with Kyle. Throwing on the run for Sterling Shepard. Kyle Laletta. For, there are a lot of Kyle Laletta haters in the, uh, in the comments section. You guys want to be upgraded. Um, at QB in the draft. There weren't many good quarterbacks to choose from, in my opinion. 
But if this game from Kyle Aletta does not show how much of a playmaker he can be, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Kyle has been incredible. And we're going to find Odell. Keep the feet in bounds. Couldn't. Couldn't quite. There's Odell. Makes the catch. Down at the 34. It's going to be fourth and three. That's going to be the end of the first half. We got off to a really good start, and the team has disappointed me since then. Do we receive at least? I don't know if we do. We do receive. I need to extend this lead. Philadelphia is still in striking distance. You guys have seen that. Why is Nat DeGear returning kicks? I thought I had Morris DuBose on this. Didn't look that bad, to be fair. Here's play action. We can go deep to our playmaker, DeMar Jacobs. Can't haul it in. Trying to ride the hot hand there. Couldn't quite get it. Second and 10. They are bringing up the safety. I don't know if anyone can hang with Odell. Or else you can streak Evan Ingram. Just block for me. Oh, Odell's got it. I need time. Odell! I also can't believe it either, Odell. Almost had it. Dropped it. Almost caught it again. Dropped it. It's now third and ten. There's Saquon, though. That's a first down. He got that. Something I will say, though, is we've been seeing far too many receiver drops. Odell, Howard Russell especially, has been killing me. Seven from the 40. We might try to go deep here. Back-to-back -back Saquon runs were not incredibly effective. Might also look to him out of the backfield. Could be an option. Third down and seven. We are going to throw it to Saquon. Had Howard Russell, but I don't trust him right now. Not on third down. Oh, Odell's wide open on the slant. Fun fact about Odell is we're going to spike the ball for his first touchdown of the season. Is uh, Odell... I saw this on... Uh, this when the uh, Giants play the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. Odell has the highest... Like, number, highest, like, stats. The best stats for the slant route in the entire NFL since he's been in the league. Like, most yards, most catches, highest catch percentage. So, something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was, but... Odell can run slants. That's what we know. Philadelphia is going to have to do a lot to get back in this game. We're going to try to cover a lot of routes. It's picked off by the rookie. Alex Espinoza. User pick. Easy reads. Pop on pop. As Carson Wentz is going to call Alex Espinoza pop. Because he's his daddy right now with two interceptions as he's thrown for. Three of them, of course, being user picks. But, uh, what, what can you do? I'm going to streak Evan Ingram. We can give him a shot. There it is. That is not, that's not what we wanted. I tried to high point in case that was undercut. There was nobody there. DeMar Jacobs. He's going to drop the ball. Oh, DeMar. DeMar, DeMar, DeMar. Third and goal from the eight. I almost want to run it with Saquon here. I just don't trust it. That's a lot of yards. And there's Odell. Wide open on the cross. And um, we're going to spike it again. That's not his new thing. I don't know why we're doing it. <laughs> it's going to be 42-14 uh, to 14 after his second touchdown of the game. And uh, second one in, in this quarter as well. Odell's been beastly. Step up. Converge on that, Espinoza. Oh, my goodness. No one's tackling. Did Alex Espinoza come back to make that play? Wow. His hustle is unbelievable. Like, actually, I'm not even, not even BSing right now. I feel like he's come back to make so many tackles for this team. They like to see. We're going to run. Oh, it's play action. It's play action. That's got to be a pick. Roman Q in coverage. And I get that he's a defensive end. Has dropped more picks than I don't think anyone's even caught on this team. Oh, that's mine. User pick. Easy reads. One fish, two fish. Redfish, Bluefish, Alex Espinoza with his, with his third pick on the season. Third pick of the game. What a debut as Carson Wentz cannot stop throwing me the ball. I know you guys love the user. You always tell me. It's cheese. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just playing defense, man. I'm just covering where I need to cover. There's DeMar Jacobs. It is off his hands. How? 
Do we need to turn receiver catching up? We're dropping everything, dude. That's a sack. That's a sack fumble. Please pick it up. Not you, Fletcher Cox. Uh, did we hold the ball for too long there? I don't even think so, but... Kyla let a fumble. Is that so bad? That's a sack. Oh my goodness, Olivier Vernon. He's not going to get credit for the sack there? What do you mean his second? He already has two. Wow, sometimes the game really shafts you on the sacks. That was the third for sure. Like, 800%. Alex Espinoza, nowhere to go for JHI. What a rookie debut. This was even better than Roman Pugh's last year. How about a fourth pick with Alex Espinoza? How nice would that be? Take a shot, Wentz. He has all the time to throw at the rookie, Julius Manning, and it's caught by Alshon Jeffrey. They're going to catch that, but we can't catch a, a drag route wide open. Come on, man. Carson Wentz having a million seconds in the pocket. Maybe a slight exaggeration. And then for that to be caught, that is brutal. Testing the rookie, and uh, Julius Manning failed the test. You can't allow a catch on that. You cannot. Antoine Todd's going to check in the game. Kind of a rarity. It's going to be play action. That's wide open, and so is that, I guess. Dallas Goddard. Into the end zone. And the Eagles are mounting. Nah, they're not. I, I thought we only had like 35 points still. It's 42-21. We still have double their points. As we're going to turn on the Jets with Saquon Barkley. Spin back. Truck a little bit. Gain of 9 or 10. We're going to give the ball to the... Oh, we got one single high safety. We're going to give the ball to Carlos Kershaw. The rookie out of Penn State. And the blocking is excellent. Kershaw takes a lick, but a 10-yard pickup. It's going to be third and four. We're going to trust the ball. Give it to Saquon Barkley. We're going to trust Saquon Barkley with the ball, I should say. we got to run over one, and he does just that. Saquon Barkley is unbelievable. Second and eight. Oh, what are you doing? Kyle Aletta misses that one. We had Odell just, he was open for sure. Might have Evan Ingram here. We won on third and eight. Oh, I didn't really like it. We're just going to throw to Saquon. Nothing was really... Oh, he's going to take a deep shot again at DuBose. In and then subsequently out of the hands of Landon Collins. Be fourth down, though. Do we man up here? I don't think so. I think zone's been pretty effective for us. Would love to see some pressure. We haven't gotten a whole ton of that. OV has been... The only guy getting it going. And that is going to be incomplete, knocked away by Morris DuBose. And we have we have the opportunity to score here. Getting even bigger lead going. What's wild is that we're up 45-21 in the fourth, and the fans here at MetLife are booing. Saquon's gone over 100. Giants fans are booing. Could be Eagles fans. I mean, Philadelphia is not incredibly far from MetLife, probably like about two hours away. Third and seven, we're just gonna run the ball. Saquon, Saquon, Barkley fighting, end zone touchdown! Oh my God, maybe the individual effort and run of the series. Oh my. What an unbelievable touchdown from number 26. All right, again, another deep shot. Landon Collins, one-on-one. -on -one. One-handed interception from Landon Collins. Brick hands Collins makes uh, one of the best plays of the series, no doubt. A one-handed incredible pick from number 21 of the New York Giants. Wentz goes deep, loves taking shots deep down that right side. And Landon Collins with just an incredible play. Second and 13 for Saquon. Oh my God, he's broken another tackle. Saquon does not go down. I love it. All right, Newfeld, Let's get a good punt going. Show me what you got. Uh, 
Um, okay. Espinoza! Can't bring down Carson Wentz. Are you kidding me? That's what you can't do, Espinoza? You can pick him off a hundred times. You can make great tackles in the backfield on uh, Jay Ajayi. You can't tackle Carson Wentz. That is wide open over the middle. Uh, just beat the spot in the zone. Parker Kuhn with the touchdown. He's been a tough player to contain over this series, and I've accidentally called a timeout, but that's probably the game. And that is going to be the ball game. 52-28 is your final here in New York. We might get another playoff just, just for shits and gigs. We'll run the ball with Saquon. Hopefully don't get injured. And we don't. That reminds me, I need to up injuries a little bit. We're going to do that at the end of this episode. But that is the end of this episode, pretty much. As the Eagles have been pretty much demolished. Everyone has a good game here. And then we're going to see how week two plays out and then week three. And then we'll uh, consider making some changes. But those are the sliders that we've been using that uh, a lot of people are using on all bad. But I don't know. I feel like overall... We were playing a pretty good offensive line, so less pressure is acceptable. Carson Wentz took some chances, and overall he was pretty accurate. Three touchdowns on us, although the six picks a lot were from the user picks. Kyle Aletta was great. I'm trying to decide uh, what we should turn up for the CPU or down for us and vice versa. Saquon was great. I think the rushing is uh, at a really good spot. 4.8 per carry for Saquon. I think he's right where he belongs. Odell, 7 for 92, two touchdowns. A lot of drops here today. We sort by drops. Demar Jacobs, Howard Russell, Odell. What the fuck is basically what I can say on that. Demar Jacobs played pretty well, though. Lane Johnson got beat up. Really probably allowed three sacks, but they're only going to list two. As far as tackles go, a bunch of guys with seven. Tackles for loss. Alex Espinosa, the rookie, with two sacks. Two for Olivier Vernon, but really three. Interceptions, Alex Espinosa with three. Landon Collins, Lorenzo, Carter, and Morris Dubose. Force fumbles for... The Eagles, and we had no defensive touchdowns. One player to upgrade, ironically, is Howard Russell. I don't really understand that. Uh, we will do go ahead and do him. Chill. Go ahead and upgrade him. Uh, pretty much stays the same overall, but his deep route running goes up. His catching, thank God, goes up. It's an 85 now. So deep route running was the main thing I cared about there. Just trying to get him better in that department. And apparently we got to worry about catching. Because that was uh, pitiful. And there's finally the upgrade point for Alex Espinoza as we simulate to week two. I think we're going to go field general for this one. Just see what happens with that. Superstar development requires uh, almost no XP for him. As you can see, we only, we're only 2,000 XP away from the next skill point. Plus two to zone coverage on that. That's awesome to see. That goes up to a 78 now. And uh, he is looking overall... Pretty good. Not bad. I think our pass blocking was pretty good against a good defensive line. We're going to lower that by a little bit to a... We'll try We'll try 50. Let's see how that goes. And then injuries, I am going to turn that up to a 14. I think that's what the, uh, the, the slider set had already. But I had it on 13 from previous time. So we're going to try 14. But that is going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.